Okay, so this is a um, famous paper. It's Mark Newman, Strogratz and Watts. Newman is absolutely the monster behind this, just charged through it all. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very clear in exposition. I would say the notation is a bit slippery. There's lots of different things going on, mu's and n's and... So I'll try to, so I've tried to kind of, I've, you know, I have a different notation, which I will probably be confusing too, but I've tried to keep, I mean, you've seen this, right, with f's and so on. We've tried to keep some of these things well, uh, well under control. So here's an example, uh, and, and I'll go through and draw some. But here's the idea. You just, so there's going to be uh, numbers and an alphabet is the sort of two kinds of nodes, right? So these nodes are not connected to each other. This is the story, and these nodes are not connected to each other. It's a bipartite structure. The links are only between the different types. Uh, but that induces a network. So that's what we think about. And it induces a network this way as well, right? So the, the ones, these guys are connected to each other through their sh sharing of um, um, connections to other, the other type of nodes. So, uh, yeah, so A is connected through this one here to B, C, and D. So you should say that, B, C, and D, right? A is also connected to E, yes, right, so B, C, D, E, all of those. So, and you can see that, that's like this movie story, there are five of them here, and that makes a clique, right? This is a little complete five graph here, right? Everyone's connected to everyone, and that's because of this. So that's going to happen again with B, D, F, and G, right? That little four group will be, and that's B, D, F, and G. They're all connected to each other. Similar out here, th this, is, this is the four context, if you like, that's making this little click here. Three makes that little piece here, so that you can see that blob there, right? You can see them sort of stuck together like this, right? So there's a, a complete graph here, a little complete graph here, complete graph here, and complete graph here. It was, well, you know, nice example. And then they share some nodes. So a great problem, Bagro's done some nice work on this too, is to say, you know, if you have this, but don't have this, can you kind of start to think about the communities? This is, you know, this is a very powerful and real way of thinking about how many networks are made, right? And all of our social networks kind of have a big aspect of this going on. Where, you know, these are contexts, we talked about it in Pox a lot. Uh, but, the, you know, you can't, this is, a, this is a weird network to produce from some sort of growing mechanism, right? It doesn't, you know, this is not going to be like our scale-free type stories. You can add all of those things on top, you can make rich get richer things, but, but this sort of growing of context and so on, and I wonder if people have done that well. I mean, we've made our own things like this, but I feel like this has always been a, uh, an area that's never quite filled out properly. Yeah. When you think about it, the scale-free networks, there's a beautiful growing story, ties back to rich get richer. A small world one is just sort of a made-up one, right? It's just a made-up little set of family of networks. It doesn't have a growth story. But these, these do, they have an evolutionary story. All right, so is that, right? So if you have your funny things like this, um, so, you can see what happens with adding an extra edge, right? So suddenly these ones are connected to each other. Um, this is bad recipes. Then um, up here that banana cantaloupe connection is made, right? So now these two, these two share something in common. And at the same time, this extra connection is going to connect uh, cucumber and dandelions, right? So that's going to be dandelion greens see how these things fill in. Lots of examples. Um, this one will, this is kind of the framing I'm going to use, uh, which will be uh, stories and, and tropes. Let's look, look at it like this, right? So imagine these are movies, and these are kind of the ideas or tropes in them, right? Kill the monster, or whatever it is, romance, or something like that, or quite detailed ones, right? Uh, so, and again, these are just these same kinds of realizations, right? So this, this movie has these two kinds of stories in it. Um, you know, this movie has these ones and da da da, da and that gives, you, gives rise to these connections between these movies, right? So movie one and movie two share story A, so they're gonna have a connection over here. 
story A and story B are in movie two, so they're connected over here. So because of Font Awesome, we will actually use this notation. <laughs> um, so, seem fair? Yeah. So, stories and tropes. Um, so we're going to have stories and tropes. Stories contain tropes, tropes and stories, and we'll have to set up a bunch of things here, right? So, uh, so we're going to have a story trope system. There's going to be some, I'll try to get all this notation to work. I know I'm not going to get there today, but I'll set up the basic idea. So we're going to have some number of stories, some number of tropes. They have to, you know, they can be anything you want, right? So that's fine. And what we're going to do is just randomly wire them up so we're going to lay our stories out and lay our tropes out. And they're labeled, you know, story one, story two, story three, trope one, trope two, right? We have those. Um, and then we're going to have some, and then this is the big deal. So we're going to have N of them, whatever it is. And then we are gonna have some um, number of edges that go between them. And they're just randomly thrown down. And so what... So that, that fits in, this is sort of a generalization of random networks, you know, with this kind of structure on top. And, and the reason for doing this is, you know, like a lot of things, you have to figure out what, what's random, what's not random. We get a long way, it turns out, with randomness by saying, you know, here are all the boards and here are all the directors. If they're randomly wired up, it basically looks like the real world, for example, or not, right? That's, that's going to be a starting kind of um, uh, base system that we want to compare a real system to. So we're going to have some distributions. This is not going to be quite like what we had before that makes a real network. This is going to be the probability that a story has k tropes. So what we want to figure out is what is the probability that a story has, is connected to k other stories through the tropes. Right? So we want to get to this. So we say this, this one has two friends, right? This one has two friends. That's our probabilities that we're talking about here. And then we want to look, be able to sort of go from here to here and say, you know, the, this story, you know, we have some distribution of stories over tropes and tropes over stories. And then if we make the story story network or the trope trope network, what do they look like? Okay. So we're going to have a couple of simple things. So the average number of affiliations, right? So there's the average number of tropes per story, the average number of stories containing a given trope, right? So it's all symmetric. And there has to be a balance, so the number of stories um, times the average number of tropes per story has to be equal to the number of edges between them, and that has to be true for the other one as well. Okay. Does it seem all right? So this, this is really, so this is really all you... This is the complete setup, right? We have two types of nodes. They're labeled, right? And we're going to throw down some, and there's some number of them, some number of each type. And then there's some number of edges between them, and then it's randomly wired up. And then we, we're going to look at the induced distribution. Ah, sorry. They're randomly wired up, but we also have this. We have the probability that a node has, uh, the node of either kind has, um, uh, so many edges, right? So that's, that's, it's more than what I said. So the simplest thing would be to just throw down the edges randomly. That would be more on the edge for anything. We, we know we need to sort of restrict things a little bit. So we, we're going to actually specify the distributions of tropes per story, the explicit distributions. Right? So we did this with the configuration model. We went from pure random networks to saying, well, let's have random networks, but we're going to say, we have a degree distribution. Everything else is random. And I, so this takes a while to get into, I know, but um, I do think, so eventually you can see that really it's just going to be, a, as, you, as you move, hmm, maybe. So imagine, you know, this is like thousands of these and there are thousands of these on top. And if you want to sort of move around from, say, the movie one, you start at one, you go up to the tropes, and then you come back to the stories. And then from those stories, you go back up to the tropes, and you come back to the stories. And you keep doing that 
And because it's randomly wired up, you, you don't, you're not going to come back to the ones that you started with, right? It's gonna be, you're always going to be sort of moving away. And so this is going to feel like, and, and very much be like, having starting at a node, having a degree distribution for it, going out one step, and then switching to a different kind of degree distribution. And then going out another step, and then switching back to the original degree distribution. So you're going to actually oscillate between these two degree distributions as we sort of spread through this network. Get to that. All right? It's fun to draw light bulbs. OK. So the usual kind of things. We're going to have this R distribution again, right? which is the, um, this is going to be, if I come down an edge and hit a, uh, hit a story, what's the probably that it has k other stories, uh, k other tropes. So you start a trope, hit a story, what's probably that has k other tropes attached to it. So there's going to be that usual other thing, right? And it's built out of P, the piece of k distribution. So it's going to work for both of them. So this is, again, all symmetric, right? So there's an R distribution 